Hello, welcome and welcome back. Belgium are off to a great start in the Euro 2020 campaign when they took on Russia and beat them 3-0 yesterday. This puts them on top of group B for now. But Belgium was not always the number 1. Back in 2000, they actually co-hosted the Euro 2000 and they were painfully knocked out in the group stages. From then on, Belgium had a very volatile journey till they reached the top. Joining in today with me would be Belgium football expert Sven Sven writes a lot about Belgium football and we contacted him through Twitter and he readily agreed to do the show for us so he'll be joining us in a few minutes but before that i just want to take you down the memory lane of how Belgium from 2000 getting knocked out in the group stages rose to the top to be number 1 so in june 2000 it was ranked 30th knocked out of home euros in group stages belgian federation begins structure overall and then in october 2003 they climbed up the rankings to 16 and begins a run of missing five consecutive major tournaments three euros and two world cups but they knew it was too early to see benefits in the new youth program and in june 2007 they again dropped to rank 71 that was the country's lowest ever ranking and in august 2010 it was ranked 48 lukaku de bruyne makes senior belgium debuts by then country begins to rise up the rankings as its golden generation develops by july 2014 they ranked 5th in the world and they reached the world cup quarter finals for the second time in history and in november 2015 they reach the world number 1 ranking in fifa and in 2016 they are down to rank 2 because of their quarter final elimination to wales that cost mark wilmots his job and roberto martinez is hired in july 2018 finishes third at the world cup knocking out brazil along the way and soon returns to world number 1 so that was the journey of belgium now let's hear it from sven klaes the belgian football expert what he has to say about the belgium national team's current form and what he thinks would be the future of belgium in this competition okay so swen is uh, joining us from belgium right now and uh, swen uh, first of all let's discuss about the eriksen incident yesterday because that is that is like shocked the entire football community and when I, when i watched the match and i watched that incident it was very hard to watch even the replay of that because uh when someone goes down after an impact that's a different feeling but then when someone goes down without an impact that's a totally different feeling so tell us about what how how you reacted and what did you think at that moment yeah also in belgium eh, it was a real shock eh if you have to see something it's not uh, that you see every day or every week in a football stadium um I have to say it wasn't the first time uh, I already saw it uh, in, in a real football stadium uh, and I can tell you it's a real shock it's a real trauma for the people who are in the stadium um, because you want to have a nice day yeah, with your family with your partner and uh, yeah you, you don't want to witness things like that and uh, it's really difficult and uh, I have huge respect for the players from both teams uh, to be honest that they still yeah that they had to play a game uh, I don't know if they were first forced to do that but uh, it's a really difficult situation and uh yeah i think in, in, if 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 you see that if your partner or your or your yeah. children uh, have to fight for their lives that i don't think uh, yeah you will be able to do your work properly and uh it's really difficult and yeah the show must go on for the uefa you saw that uh it's also yeah, yeah the games yeah. the travel is really difficult uh, they were first otherwise to play it at the next day 12 pm so um yeah, yeah. lost the game unfortunately but uh, of course it's it's the health of the p- people eh? we all always saw the last one and a half year the health of the people is the most important thing and also yesterday we saw that again so uh, also use respect for the healthcare uh, exactly uh, yeah respect it uh, immediately yeah yeah i think uh, 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 the coach casper uh, also uh, had mentioned that uh, he's considering uh, getting a psychiatrist to actually uh get a appointment with all the players because they had gone through so much because you could see that when they came back on the pitch to play again and they some players were just emotionally exhausted they just couldn't do it yeah i fully understand so uh yeah you always see that now also in belgium football at the moment almost every club has a psychological uh, team uh, so uh it's really necessary at the moment that eh? you they have to uh, it's a high pressure they have to play every week and uh, when they play one match yeah less it's uh, they get thousands of hate comments and thing like that so uh, 
the mind is really important now for a football player. Eh? They all have the legs and the feet to be awesome players, but uh, it's just now uh, about the mindset. Exactly. All right. All right. So, uh, do you think Eriksson would be able to kind of play again? Because a uh, similar kind of incident happened with Muamba and Bolton uh, back in 2012. And he just couldn't con- continue his career. And uh, six months later, he had to end his career. So, what is going to be Eriksson's future now? Yeah, it will be, of course, very difficult. Uh, I don't have the, the, the medical details, but of course, uh, I don't see him play for several months. Uh, you have to be examined very carefully. And uh, also, how will he play? Uh, will he play with, I don't know, I call it in English, a tactical device in his heart? We also saw that for Belgian players. They could do that for yeah one, two, three years, and then it's over. Because when they have a next time, they have again a shock. And yeah, then uh, no, no uh, doctor will say uh, you can play again football. So, uh, yeah. and of course... Uh, they have children and, uh, and and a wife, so that's the most important thing. Uh, and uh, yeah, they could otherwise do other jobs. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's really difficult. And uh, also for the Belgium team, uh, I can say it had some impact, a uh, huge impact, uh, to be honest. Uh, yeah. You saw Romelu Lukaku scoring after yeah, his goal. Yeah, uh, he, he dedicated the... I love you. Yeah. And uh, for Toby Alderweireld and Jan Vertonghen are two central defenders yeah. who played more than 300 games together with Christian Eriksen. So... Uh, yeah, that it was uh, almost like someone died at the team bus. Uh, they told us before the game. So uh, yeah, yeah. for the Belgian team, it had their impact. And as a coach, uh, also for Roberto Martinez, it had a huge impact because yeah, you were talking about the tactics, and then something like that happens. Uh, everyone reads the messages on, uh, like I said, Christian Eric has sent uh, a group, uh, has sent a message in the group app from Inter Milan, and uh, yeah, Romelu Kaku almost immediately read it so yeah and then the tactical uh yeah it's almost not important anymore so it was also really difficult how the belgium team would react on that uh, as a coach they were all prepared to play a good game but when something like that happened so yeah it's just yeah you have to feel and then you also saw that in the game uh, it's they won the game pure on quality to be honest yeah, yeah. <laughs> the tactical it was pure on quality and that russia made mistakes yeah all right, uh, so let's talk about uh, Belgium, uh, Sven. So uh, Belgium are now topping the group, and uh, it's it's kind of a great start for Belgium, uh, just like Italy. Uh, just let 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 me understand because I'm from India, and there are a lot of Indian uh, people watching this on uh, on my channel. So we just want to understand because uh, getting into the details of Belgium squad and all of that before that. Uh, just over 11 million people in population and yeah. you could get so much of quality football out there. So how is this basically possible? Like there should be some fundamentals, right? So being a, <laughs> yeah, being a football uh, journalist, you could shed some light on that because India has a lot of population and we're, we're still struggling to get that level up. Yeah. Yeah, for, to be clear, it's not in our water or uh, things like that. So, uh, no, uh, starting a lot of investing in youth academies, training the best people, more professional, putting the money where it's needed. Not always put the money for the first team, but also start investing in the youth academies, building new youth academies, having professional coaches really at a young age. And uh, yeah, that's all what they started to do. And then... Yeah, some went to, to our next countries to uh, yeah to France. Eh? Eden Hazard went to went to Lille or Toby Alderweireld, Jan Vertonghen, players like that. They all went to uh, Amsterdam Ajax. So uh, yeah, all have you uh, very good uh, youth academies, and uh, yeah, that was really the start of uh, yeah. And then later on, Belgium also got. Uh, Better youth academies, but uh, to be honest, they were yeah. Most of them were all developed in uh, in other countries, eh? like uh, Chelsea with Romelu Lukaku, Kevin De Bruyne at Chelsea first. So uh, yeah, of course, there's always some bit of luck, and uh, yeah, we can say we have a golden generation at the moment, and uh, yeah, we, yeah, it's the best generation in, in 100 years for the Belgian FA. So uh, it's really a pleasure to to watch it because uh, almost 10, 20, 15 years ago. We were nowhere, eh? we were number 66 on the FIFA ranking, yeah. and now we're several years number one. So, yeah. uh, outperforming Spain, France. Yeah, it's tremendous. It's tremendous because when uh, when Belgium co hosted uh, in uh, 2000, uh, yeah. Uh, a it was, yeah, it was a disaster. It was a disaster start for Belgium, and uh, 
uh, Germany was also out of the group stages at that time. But then Germany bounced back and they came like just uh, winning the World Cup and all of that. But Belgium still is is not it has hasn't got that. So when do you no. think is is that going to happen? And do you think this Euros are the perfect opportunity? Um, yeah, well, your last question. I don't think it's it's one of their last opportunities. I also think uh, next year in Dubai of uh, Qatar could also okay. that will be their last uh, opportunity because then yeah, also the defense is getting older and older. Uh, yeah. They say uh, we get more experience, but uh, yeah, against all the young guys, uh, maybe like in Haaland uh, in the future, uh, Mbappé, uh, yeah, they're yeah, they're getting too slow uh, to be honest. So, but yeah, in the end, yeah, we became more professional. Eh? We had uh, Dick Advocaat at a certain point. Uh, he came in as Belgian head coach, and uh, yeah, but he already left after some months uh, to Russia for the money. But yeah, you have to profit. It has to be more professional, and that was the way to work. And uh, it's also difficult because the FA didn't have a lot of money. So uh, sometimes they had to pay for their friendly games. Now we get paid for the friendly games. So we're in a whole other situation at the moment. So money is coming in, and then you get better and better. You can yeah. buy you know, like, uh, something like a better medical team. Everything uh, can develop. Huh? You can buy a hotel for the players. Huh? Because yeah. don't forget, uh, for at the Euros at the moment, we... Uh, we don't have a city, yeah. We're the, the city of uh, Brussels is the capital of Europe, but we don't have an own national stadium at the moment. So uh, we have to travel a lot, and uh, yeah, we now have a, a hotel uh, near the, near the training uh, center. So uh, it costs a lot of money, and uh, yeah, I think also later in the tournament, all the traveling can be uh, a disadvantage. But uh, at the moment, uh, because the team and the, the press already landed this morning a few hours ago, so uh, yeah, it's really. Uh, yeah, and also with the yeah, also the things what happened. I think everyone uh, needed their rest uh, this morning. But uh, yeah. yeah, we will see what brings the future. But the first game was uh, like everyone hoped. Yeah, great. Okay, so let's get to the prediction part, uh, Sven. Uh, what do you what do you what do you think is uh, going to be Belgium's uh, round of sixteen quarter final, semi final, and then final? Uh, what 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 is your prediction? Yeah, I have to be honest. Uh, Belgium is, is, like you said, is a small country. Yeah? O- only 11 million people. But yeah, everyone in uh, our country is now expecting at least half final, semi final. So um, okay. yeah, you can see that's a bit ambitious. But of course, we had the bronze medal in Russia three years ago. So um, it's it's yeah a part of uh, Vincent Company uh, who left the team. Marion Fellaini from Man United. It's still the same team. Uh, yeah. But yeah, we still have some some doubts at the moment. Eh? Kevin De Bruyne only played twenty. Uh, Eden Hazard only played twenty minutes. So will he be fit for the rest of the tournament? And yeah, will he shine eh? in a, in the quarter or in a yeah. semi final? Everyone yeah. hopes. But uh, yeah, it will be really difficult. Eh? You can't be ready in three four uh, weeks uh, uh, games. Uh, so uh, also uh, Kevin uh, De Bruyne uh, with his eye socket uh, didn't travel to Russia yesterday. Uh, um, Axel Witzel didn't travel to Russia um, and now of course with Timothy Castagne uh, also broken his eye socket on two places so uh, at the moment we have two players uh, with a broken eye socket so uh, maybe that's something yeah the impact is <laughs> at the moment in the Belgium team is not really good so I think every yeah, I think semi-final would be nice eh? don't forget there will always be a dark horse um, some expected it would be Turkey so but after the first game nobody yeah. is thinking of yeah, Turkey yeah. Exactly. Final, so. I think I think Italy was way too strong for Turkey because uh, if they had taken on another team in the first match, the, I think Turkey's confidence would have been different. But Italy was just so fast, so young. The teams teams so young now, and uh, they didn't stand a chance. Yeah, indeed. So yesterday, I can say Belgium team first half we played at eighty percent. Uh, we yeah we scored every mistake from uh, from Russia. Second half was was less. I think we yeah it was about sixty percent of the capacity. But yeah, if you win an opening game in the Euros with three uh, nil, you have to be satisfied. Uh, all yeah. uh, some top players still don't play. Uh, three world class players yeah. and uh, yeah. Yeah. but like the in the end we still have Romelu Lukaku and Thibaut Courtois. So uh, yeah, to uh, one of the best players in the world. Uh, when you when you saw his statistics, uh, you have to be afraid. Uh, he scored. Uh, what was it? Uh, Twenty-two goals in his last nineteen games, 
40 goals this season for club and country. So uh, really amazing. And uh, yeah, when we play the tournament, it will be yeah due to Romelu Lukaku, of course. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, another uh, question about uh, Hazard, uh, Sven. Um, what do you think is going to be Hazard's uh, future? I mean, in, in terms of club? Yeah, I, I think he will stay. He still has to prove himself eh, for Real Madrid. Eh? Uh, I think uh, the, yeah, no one is at the moment satisfied about uh, Eden Hazard at the moment. So, um, yeah, I think he also wants to show what he's capable of and uh, also with the injuries. And uh, yeah. sometimes he can show a bit of talent, eh, but uh, yeah, you see it yeah. also in the game. It's, it's, but, it's, it's not uh, the Hazard yeah. from two years ago. Do you, think, do you think the move to Real Madrid actually pushed him a little bit backward? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's also his body uh, that's getting more mature. I don't know. Um, yeah, in my opinion, it was a real yeah a surprise that he yeah that he was yeah some kilos too heavy when he yeah. arrived at Real Madrid. And in my opinion, as a process for, as a professional football player, you can't do that. So, but he also did that in the past at Chelsea. Uh, so uh, yeah, but when you go for a new club, you're rec yeah, one of the record signings uh, that year. So uh, you can't do that. So in me, it, it's a bit of lack of professionality. But uh, yeah, we will see. It's an excellent player, and uh, yeah, he has to perform. Huh? Also, but it's really difficult at the moment with Real Madrid. So uh, yeah, it's a world class player, and we will see. Uh, I hope he can now shine at the Euros, but I don't think so. So I think uh, Real Madrid will have a really good player uh, in September uh, back again. That was a nice conversation with you, Sven. Thanks for joining in. And Sven would be joining us for every Belgium analysis from now. And Denmark player Eriksen is fully recovered and is conscious at hospital now. That's a great news for all the football fans across the world because the incident just sent shockwaves across the world. Okay, it's now time for a quick quiz section. If you followed this video well, then you would guess this right. We have discussed this in this video. In 2018 World Cup, what was the position of Belgium? Which players did they finish in the 2018 World Cup? That's the question. Comment your answers below and whoever gets the right answer the first would get a shout out on my next video. Today we have two matches. Uh, one from Group D which is England against Croatia and we also have a Group C match which is Austria versus North Macedonia. So I'll be meeting you guys tomorrow with the updates of whatever happened in today's match. See you again soon. Signing off Pradeep.